Hi, welcome to another episode of the Massachusetts Pirate News. We've got some uh, updates, some local updates, as well as some national updates that we're sure are concerned uh, are concerns to pirates uh, in the United States. So with that, uh, Joe, can you give us, sorry, I jumped the gun there. Uh, my name is James O'Keefe, and I'm joined by uh, Joe um, and Eli. How are the two of you today? I am fantastic. Uh, definitely hitting the campaign trail. We're we're taking names. We're meeting people and getting out there as pirates and uh, seen a lot of good support, seen some people not like us so much. More on that later. And then, uh, you know, just, but it's such an amazing learning experience. And you, Eli, how are you? Uh, I'm doing good too. It's fun watching you guys learn and discover things. Glad to have you on. So uh, Steve, unfortunately, is not going to be able to join us. It is in Arlington town meeting. And Steve, being a dedicated uh, town meeting member, is concentrating on that. He'll probably be busy for the next few weeks. Uh, we wish him well, and we're sure that Arlington will have better decisions with his involvement. We encourage you, uh, if your town has elected town meeting, uh, to go and, um, and run. Uh, unfortunately, many towns it's done for this year. Uh, the elections for elected town meetings are done for this year, um, but check your local uh, town government to see when those are. You can always run next year. And of course, um, for most of the towns in Massachusetts, and that's something close to 290 to 300 uh, or so, there's uh, open town meeting, which means anyone can show up. So we encourage you as a pirate to go and participate in local democracy. So with that, uh, Joe, um, speaking of elections, how goes the, how's the campaign trail? How goes it gathering signatures? Uh, well, uh, Jamie, you've been with me the whole way um, and been with me with boots on the ground the entire time. Uh, such a strong encouragement, and I really appreciate it, you in ways I can't even begin to describe. But it's been it's been an interesting experience, and really where I find it is um, it kind of takes me back to my retail years when I was working retail, and there was always a phrase where I always stuck with me, which is the world takes all types, and it it certainly does. I have met so many wonderful people and, you know, not that I have uh, met that many bad people, but every once in a while we get one that just does not like us, wants nothing to do with us. I've had great conversations with people who don't vote, tried to convince them to, you know, be part of the process. But at the end of the day, I'm not there to harm them, bother them, or really mess, interfere with their lives. I think the big thing for me is to know that there are still good people willing to partake in the process who want to see what's best for everybody and that there's still stuff worth fighting for because things can always get worse. Um, I mean, today, in fact, a uh, really funny event. And I know Jamie's laughing about it because he knows exactly what I'm going to be saying. But he had the cops called on him today. And it was the nicest cop interaction I've ever seen. <laughs> they came over to us. They, I, I don't know the exact details of why this person called the cops on us. Um, and see, the thing with gathering signatures, it's not actually soliciting. So it doesn't really fall under any of the soliciting laws. And even though when we see we have a policy that if it's no soliciting or leave us alone or smile or don't beware of dog, beware of master. We, we tend to leave those people alone um, because we, we respect privacy, dignity, and the right to be left alone. You know, it's kind of like the policy that we want to set, you know, but um, apparently there was a miscommunication, Jamie. Do you want to fill us in on that? 
Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I like photographing things and I brought my camera along to go and photograph Joe out there. You know, it's always useful to have photos around of your candidate that you can use in your literature or website or whatever. And um, I also occasionally see the uh, occasional quirky thing here or there. Um, and we all have so many of us uh, have cell phones, which have pretty darn good cameras on them. But, you know, I like carrying my camera around and I have it on its uh, sling and they're suspended behind my back. And so I just came across someone who was in front of their house. I introduced myself. I asked if they were the owner because I'm gathering signatures and I didn't if they were the owner, I wanted to ask them rather than like wander up to the door and knock and the person would be like, I'm the owner. So somehow things didn't necessarily get, um, th there was a little miscommunication, but ultimately I, you know, he wasn't interested in gathering signatures and I said, that's fine. Have a great day. Uh, and I walked away and then he called over to me and I thought he, wanted to ask me other questions. So I came over and I did my spiel again, but it was like, why do you have a camera? Now, first of all, photography is not a crime. <laughs> and wandering around with a camera is not a crime. Uh, but I, you know, I'm only using it, uh, you know, in this particular instance to take pictures of Joe. And so I said, I'm using it to photograph the candidate and wandered off and you know we continued down several other roads and then it was time for a bathroom break and uh we wandered back um whereupon a police officer showed up and uh you know asked what i was doing and i explained i'm gathering signatures to get uh joe on the ballot and do you have a solicitor license he asked and i said I don't need a solicitor license. It's a constitutionally, I don't think I said it's a constitutionally protected activity, but uh, it is a constitutionally protected activity. Um, and soon Joe showed up and the sergeant showed up and we got all that stuff worked out. You know, there have been some break-ins in the area and there have been lots of folks who are, going door to door, selling various things. And um, that is not yeah. always viewed favorably by everyone, especially when it appears to be in a large volume. Um, so. Anyway. Well, speaking to the soliciting thing, there's been a high number of people soliciting solar panels. Um, without that said, without that seal of approval, and they'd rather just send out all these people trying to literally knock on our doors every couple days um all over the place to the point where it became a thing so but yeah like you said jamie um once i showed up and once the sergeant showed up it, it was a non-issue and it was great it was just it was kind of funny to me because jamie was so flustered and uh not like not flustered I was but like, more terse than i should be <laughs> I, mean, I think the fact that you like I'm, I'm, here's there's the government form <laughs> you know that i'm having people sign <laughs> i think what added to the stress is the fact that it was a bathroom break you know so the funny <laughs> story and you know i mean we're people too and you know we're just we're doing our thing and sometimes people don't get it you know and it's it really falls on all of us to make sure that we get there together and teach us teach each other like what's right and what the law is and things like that so but in the end of the day no harm no foul and so we ended up continuing on i had a lot of great conversations after that and you know i mean i we ended up um ended up just meeting so many wonderful people today and every day that we've done this it's just been me getting in front of people and hearing how they feel, even people who didn't vote. Or there was a couple guys who had some bikes that were just amazing people to have a conversation with, even though we didn't get their signature because they're not registered. I mean, just hearing about them and what's going on with their life and hearing about 
um, all the troubles or hearing about like what's going on with them and just getting a moment to talk about bikes and talk about something that's not just strictly campaigns. It's just a different experience being out there at people's homes. And so, you know, a lot of the times when we're doing this in a park or we're doing this, um, and we're doing this at a train station, we're doing it down. People are so go, go, go. But when you actually get in front of them at their door on a day that they're relaxing, people open up to you a lot better. So, you know, and, um, and again, I wouldn't have made it this far without your help, Mr. O'Keefe. And so I really appreciate, I appreciate your guidance on this. And I'm really, uh, I think this is something I can do every two years. So until, uh, we get, get myself in there, get other people in there. And, uh, I'm looking forward to really what the rest of this year brings. And speaking of brings, what, how, how many signatures do you have? How many validated signatures do you have so far? So the elections office said a hundred and, 57 but when i counted it i got 151 so small clerical error but still enough to be considered a candidate but not enough with enough cushion where somebody from uh, miss howard's campaign can't come in with thousands of dollars and give me a headache you know knocking me out just because they could so that's why we were out today that's why we're going to really campaign later on this week I think the next big push is going to be a Wednesday in the middle of the week and uh, just go out for a couple hours. Um, we do have a pirate coming in from Chicago uh, just to help out with this for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And so we're just going to take advantage and and just try and make sure that we have plenty of signatures to really hammer this home. So I'm looking forward to it. It'd be good to see Mitch too. It would. Your person. Uh, any other pirates that want to come out and help us out and get to meet a pirate from another from another land and uh, from the Chicago land area, uh, you'll be more than welcome. And it'll, especially if you're thinking of running, uh, this would be a good experience for you to learn how we're doing the grassroots movement, which is almost in the political terms, a lot harder for them to stop because we, we literally gain the support right directly from the people. So that being said, um, there is some good news coming up. Um, Mr. O'Keefe. So, uh, there's been a bunch of bills before, um, the house, uh, and the Senate. We're going to talk about one uh, that went in our favor this time. And the House passed H.R. 4639, or the Fourth Amendment is Not for Sale Act. Essentially, as you know, you know watching this, um, governments, you know, city, state, federal routinely go to data brokers. And if they want where you've been between certain days uh, or other information that these data brokers gather on you, they can pay some money and get that information and then use that to identify um, where they can go and get a warrant to uh, actually get the information that they need to make a case against you. Um, so it really allows them to just pay money and potentially go on fishing expeditions and then, in essence, um, using parallel construction, go back and request the data from a warrant. So what the Fourth Amendment is not for sale act would do is it would prevent um, this from happening. It would say that they couldn't go and... Uh, pay some money. They needed a warrant before they could even go and look. And that is a vital, um, I mean, the Fourth Amendment has been whittled down and it's uh, ludicrous to me that we would need to pass this bill, but, you know, Supreme Court. Um, but 
it is past the house um, and would help in terms of protecting our privacy, having a warrant requirement. Um, Clark, Keating, Lynch, Neal all voted against it. So it's still time if you wanted to run uh, for U.S. Congress and you're in one of their dis- if you're in the district of one of the four of them, those would be good folks to run against. Um, uh, Auchincloss, uh, which kind of unexpected to me. McGovern, Moulton, also kind of unexpected. Uh, Presley and Trahan uh, voted in favor of this bill. So keep that in mind. I mean, Presley and McGovern in general have been very good. The others have, in terms of the issues that we we care about, like Section 702, McGovern and Presley definitely voted against that, um, whereas the other seven voted for it. So we'll get to that in a moment. Um, so this is a good bill. It's going to go to the Senate, and with any luck, will be passed. Thoughts? Uh, just to clarify uh, for those watching at home, the when Jamie, when you were saying that the Supreme Court kind of shot down, when Roe versus Wade got shot down by the U.S. Supreme uh, judges, that basically eliminated a lot of the privacy protections that we had enjoyed for so long. Because no, no, I was, sorry, Joe, I wasn't talking about that. It's just the Supreme Court has basically watered down the Fourth Amendment. And yeah, you know, well, for example, it's like, part of that. Uh, you know, uh, civil asset forfeiture is a really good example where the Supreme Court said, yeah, the state can go and sue your stuff, <laughs> saying it was part of a crime. <laughs> and yeah. then you don't get a defense, you don't get, you know, a public defender to defend your stuff. Um, so they can just take your money, you know, you're driving across country um move in house and you're you know you care about you want to have the cash and they'll just like stop you on the highway find you have ten thousand dollars and just whoop, that's ours now <laughs> and then how yeah. do you go and how do you, you go don't get and it challenge back. that so you, yeah you don't get it back because you're like oh it was Ill- illegal purposes but they just take your money and then um you just don't get that back, even if you don't have any crimes associated with you. Exactly. But uh, a big part of what would eliminate or really hurt the privacy was when they reversed Rule versus Wade. Um, that that made a big issue as far as privacy, privacy and decency and things of that nature. So that's why this is such a huge deal that we're getting this back because this establishes that yes, in fact, we do have um, a right to certain privacies and without due process. So, huge win. Eli? Sorry. Uh, You guys have touched on all the points that I was planning on touching on, so I'm not going to waste too much time on it. All right. We'll ask you next first. <laughs> All right. So um, next, the next bill up um, is Section 702 renewal. Um, that passed in the House, and as I, I mentioned, everyone except McGovern and Presley uh, voted for that. Um, in the Senate, it passed uh, by 60 votes, which was what they needed. Um there are a bunch of amendments, such as Durbin's 1841, to prohibit warrantless access to the communications and other information of U.S. persons, proposed by Senator Durbin, that did the best. It lost 42 to 50. Um, and then when the bill finally, when Section 702 uh, renewal finally, which is H.R. 7888, uh, finally went to a vote, both um, Warren and Markey voted against it. Um, Eli, what do you think? Um, yeah, great. I didn't really think of anything to talk about. Um, you know, no worries. Yeah. On. Um, I'll let Joe talk, and then I'll sort of go back in there, go back and circle around. 
Well, unfortunately, I'm not as familiar with this bill. Um, but uh, could you clarify it a little bit better, Jamie? Sure. Section 702 um, of the um, Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act of 1978 um, would allow... So if, if a, someone, a citizen in the U.S. contacts, say, calls someone who's uh, in another country, um, then they can listen into that communication without a warrant. Um, whereas, you know, like with the Durban Amendment, it would put in place that no, if you if there's communication between a U.S. Um, between a U.S. citizen, uh, sorry, sorry, United States persons. Let me be clear about that. Uh, someone in the U.S. Uh, talking with someone outside, um, you don't need a warrant to listen on a, or or to get that communication. Um, because of what Section 702 would do. And so there is, you know, it comes up every like five or so years for renewal. Um, and, <clears throat> uh, you know, the, the forces of privacy <laughs> attempt to go and say, hey, can we get some more protections in there? And the forces of we must spy on everything. Oh, no, we could have another 9 11 or a mushroom cloud, um, <clears throat> you know, we'll always go and say, no, we can't do that. And so we, we keep going around and this is the new go around, unfortunately. Um, so we didn't get things in there that we would want, which is like a warrant requirement that they can't tap your line and listen in if you're, uh, you know, just because you're talking with someone in another country. So, yeah, I, I just didn't recognize the number, but now I know exactly which bill you're talking about. Yeah, this was kind of like a major defeat. Ain't nobody need to hear your pillow talk as you're getting your passport, bro. Uh, nobody. But this is exactly who it targets. You're going to date outside the U.S. They're going to listen. They're going to listen. And you might think you're being smooth, but don't do it. It's bad. Because you you literally will have the, the what was it, the meme, the, the FBI agent having to listen to every word? Every single Seems word. Seems like torture, personally. <laughs> <laughs> Soon they'll have the bots listening in and then, you know, summarizing it wrong. <laughs> Some will end up, you know, on a drone strike or something. Oh, man. Maybe they can give me pointers. <laughs> like no Joe don't do that <laughs> uh, with that being said uh, um, yeah no this is definitely definitely one of those ones where they just get a free hall pass to spy on American citizens so kind of a continuation of the Patriot Act it does specifically involve people talking outside the US but that's still not a big jump to them just listening to everybody in the U S you know, and I'm pretty sure thanks to certain Edwards of Snowden that they're already doing that too. You know, they're kind of just spying on American citizens. We know it, you know, especially if you say certain words, Oh, well, there was a comedy skit from, um, I think it was a, guy off Comedy Central, the whitest kids you know, were words that you're not allowed to say over any telephone line because then they'll instantly get them listening to you. Definitely hilarious. Definitely don't do it. Um, but it was, uh, it was, there are certain words that you can say and you'll have an FBI agent all over you. So just be careful what you're saying. You know, because then they're going to police what you say and what you think, and that just again leads to bad. So the other bill, um, 
it's been in the news that um, there's an appropriation bill to give uh, military funding to Israel, Ukraine, Taiwan, and some other countries. Um, and one of the things the House, that passed in the House, and one of the things that they snuck in was the TikTok ban. Um, so now that go so even though it had gone to the Senate and the Senate's like, yeah, maybe we'll take it up. We'll see. Who knows? Um, now it's in the bill and the Senate's going to have to be like, okay, if we don't want it, we're going to have to pull it out. So um, now would be a good time to contact your, to contact Senators Warren or Markey and ask them to have the TikTok ban pulled out. <clears throat> Thoughts? I mean, Jamie, how do you feel about TikTok? Do you feel like dancing dancing kids are really going to be be it? Even though it hurts my soul that there have been certain songs references, oh, that song on TikTok, and I was like, oh, oh, my soul. Um, Some 1960s Motown thing, and it's like it's something on TikTok. Or, or even stuff from the 80s, the sacred 80s power rock, you know? <laughs> <laughs> just just no but at the same time um it's entertaining kids you know it's tiktok sure let's stop stop chinese government from spying on us i'm all for like stopping governments from spying on us i'm for that yes great idea let's do that Let's start with our own and work on the other half. <laughs> like, uh. stopping spying begins at home. <laughs> if we can't control the spying in our own house, you know, it's hard to put up the blinds when when we have the spotlights on us. Yeah. So, but TikTok. There's got to be more to the story than, than meets the eye. Why suddenly now, after all this, why TikTok? Why are they I mean, focusing on TikTok I don't know, when they got panics? I mean, oh no, the, Russian, when they the, have... the, the Chinese are coming. <laughs> no, they're going to indoctrinate our children in, you know. Uh, they're <laughs> already Mars, here. Little red book. <laughs> they're already here. Who cares? We're, we're a nation. We're the melting pot. Who cares? Bring them over. Whatever. I don't care. Just. Just stop, like the love of the love of God and all that is holy. Why TikTok? Okay, when when you let Twitter, just that happens, or Facebook, you know, we you gonna ban Facebook. It, it, is it because they ban Facebook over there that we have to be like, no, 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 you can't have TikTok over here then? Like, why why can't we choose what? What stupid stuff we're paying attention to on our phones. <laughs> well, what's even funnier, I find, is that so the the TikTok that is allowed in China is like they they limit a lot of stuff, and so you can't if it's not educational or doesn't you know is too I don't know they 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 really limit what can be shown in the Chinese version of TikTok. And there are various American American politicians who are like, we should do that here. And I'm like, do, do you not understand this thing called the First Amendment? <laughs> yeah. So. I think what it is, is those who have gotten so used to power have completely forgotten the experiences of the American people and what it is to be free, what it is to be really have your feet on the ground, which is part of the reason why I'm running is because these people don't have to, they don't have to go out and work a 60 hour work week. They don't have to go out. And if they don't show up for work, that house is not getting built. You know, it's like they don't, they they don't know what the common American people have to go through anymore. 
you know, the, the fire that burns the rest of us does not touch them. And so one of the things that I got into a conversation with one of the people that don't vote um, was literally like evil can exist when good men do nothing or good. Maybe it would be better to say good people do nothing, but evil, these people don't care. They don't represent us. They haven't represented us in a long time. Look at what's happening to our whole country. You know, and if we don't, if good people don't stand up and take a, take a real crack at it, you know, even if we don't win, we should put them shaking in their boots and to remind them that their power is only there to serve the people, not the other way around. So my two cents. Thanks, Joe. Um, Eli, do you have any final thoughts? Um, so I just want to make sure I uh, remember this correctly. The aid package to like Ukraine and Israel is combined with the TikTok ban, right? That's correct. Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah. I think the reason why they they combine them isn't really to just like one big package. It's more because the group that supports more aid to Ukraine and Israel and the group that supports a TikTok ban, they both have large support, but it's kind of like in more separate categories of people so it helps delay the passing of both of those hmm. uh, especially with the aid that's i think about a hundred billion dollars altogether yeah, like that. so obviously they want to postpone that or, and same thing with the tiktok ban not the people who will want the ban don't want more aid and vice versa so it's possibly part of that as well just trying to postpone delay that as much as possible and if it gets votes and passed up if it votes and fails they can just say oh well we tried no more aid in general mm. or something along those lines thanks for that i hadn't i hadn't heard of that that's an interesting idea yeah that is a good perspective thank you um so with that uh we are at time um thank you very much for watching this if you've stayed till the end we hope you found it informative and useful i uh, will put links in the description for how you can uh tell us you're going to join us on wednesday at six o'clock in lowell uh to gather signatures for joe um we will be at the boxborough fifers day in june 15th if i recall correctly uh, also that day is the trans I've heard is, um, the yearly trans resistance. Um, it would be a March, but this time I guess it's going to be a picnic and stand out. So, um, if that's, if you're interested in, uh, you know, coming into Boston or you live in Boston, you'd like to, you'd rather go to the uh trans resistance march and represent us there by all means please contact us info at masspirates.org uh we like to have some folks there um we were supposed to go to the boxborough fifers last year uh and we unfortunately weren't able to make it so we want to go there this year and uh we were also at the trans resistance march was a great time so um by all means if that's something you want to help with uh, do give us, uh, you know, send us an email info at masspirates.org. You can find us at masspirates.org. You can find us in various social media. There are links in the description below, as well as how you can uh, join our mailing list. You can always become a pirate voter when you fill out your voter registration form. Just enter pirate on your political designation, and you'll be one of us. So, with that, uh, thank you, Eli. Thank you, Joe. Um, Hope uh, everyone had a wonderful weekend and has a great weekend, a great week coming up. Uh, looking forward to Wednesday when we get to meet uh, Mitch from Chicago. So with that, thank you very much. Take care, like, share, subscribe, and all that. Bye.